I'd like to ask, who remembers Jesse? You remember my Jesse? Uh, Jesse was a young man that came all the way from South Bend, Indiana, and was placed into a foster care agency called Minority Specialized Care. At that time, my daughter was the director of this agency. And through the educational campaigns and through the work that she did, I stood for for so long, uh, she was able to understand that Jesse was gay and opened Jesse up so that he became a part of fairness. And he stayed with Fairness until he was grown. And he said, congratulations to 20 years tonight that uh, he thinks about Fairness all the time. And it has enabled the educational pieces that you all, that you all put together how has also enabled her to deal with those that's coming into the agency that are gay and bisexual and lesbians. And I think her agency is the only agency that takes in minority children whether they straight or gay. I just to follow up quickly on your question, is, as Pam said, and one of the reasons we already had various panels, for example, religious leaders for fairness, and so there was there was a lot of the energy going out, not not just with co-founders, but a lot of panels and a lot of people trained to go speak, and we were also responding because. Some of those Board of Aldermen members or mm -hmm. county commissioners would often say to us, you need to do more education. Yes. So, you know, despite the fact we would come in and say, you need to do some leadership, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would, many of them would come back and say, you need to do some more education. And we were able to say again and again, you know what, we've done that education and you're going to start getting postcards for your constituents. And then those started yeah. to come yeah. in. And so, it was, it was just on all different fronts that that, that was able to, uh, to reach out. And then, of course, very much at the Board of Aldermen, when we had speakers, and I, I thought it was one of the great things we did at the Board of Aldermen, you know, it was like theater when you had these three-minute discussions. And we had very much planned, and everyone worked on this, of this person will be followed by this person, and this message will dovetail with that message. And the other side, it was just wonderful watching them because, you know, it was every kind of kook that could possibly run to the microphone. And, and it was certainly heartfelt kookery. <laughs> but they had to time themselves, and then their three minutes would run out, and, you know, the bell would ring, and they'd have to sit down. And, and our next person would get up and say the right thing. And it was, it was great fun, actually. <laughs> I forgot that. So. Personal testimonies. I mean, they would bring tears to your eyes to hear the stories and for them to sit there and and people came out yeah. you know right there before the board of aldermen there were nurses or whatever they were doing whatever their profession was they put it all on the line you know so that was that was just powerful and i was just going to say that now is my point in time to say that i said that we would leave you longing for more <laughs> and i hope that you are um, and We'll come back to the next in this series of panel discussions, which again is on your Bifold Red program. It's Wednesday, October the 5th at 6 p.m. in the basement of the University of Louisville Extern Library in the Chow Auditorium. And once again, that part of Fairness Campaign, 20 Years of Making a Better, better History Panel, will focus on our history of dismantling racism. And then the final one will be in November, which will once again address the importance of the transgender community's inclusion in our passage of the original Fairness Ordinance in 1999. Tonight's event has been, oh, yeah, you can applaud that. Don't yeah. that. There are still some refreshments in the back. I ask you to please eat all the food. <laughs> it won't go anywhere unless you eat it, so put it in your bellies. And there's plenty of wine and beer and punch left. I ask you to consume all of that before you leave. Have, have some more fellowship and, uh, and entertain yourselves before you go. Um, uh, I do ask you, uh, tonight's event was free uh, and open to the public. If you have the ability to make a contribution to the Fairness Campaign to celebrate this 20th anniversary and tonight's history panel, I ask you to do so. You can make a cash check or credit card contribution at uh, the information table by seeing either Laura, Yay. our administrative coordinator, Laura, who deserves a round of applause, 
all our intern Zach, our intern Zach. And boy, just for some great times and laughs, I encourage you to pick up yes. one of the oh, nice yeah. One of the 1995 oh. Fairness Campaign Family Calendar. <laughs> we're in the midst of an archival process with the University of Louisville, so we're going through all of our old files and many boxes in the Fairness Campaign office, and uh, we found these wonderful um, calendars which have some great photographs, maybe embarrassing, of Pam <laughs> McMichael, Carla Wallace, Jeff Rogers, some others. So pick one of these up there on the table out there. Make a contribution if you can. And one final round of applause for tonight's moderator, Dr. Kate Fossil from the University of Louisville. Your fifth district, Louisville Metro Councilwoman, Sherry Bryan Hamilton. Give yourselves a round of applause for celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Fairness Campaign.